Hello and thanks for joining us here on France 24 for France in Focus. I'm Tom Burgess Watson coming up in the programme. Rising unemployment. The French president breaks a key pledge as the latest jobless figures show he's failing to reverse the trend. And the race to City Hall. The candidates battling it out to become the next mayor of Paris take their already heated campaign to the next level. And celebrating comic books, we take you to the biggest event of its kind in Europe, the Angoulême International Comics Festival. We begin at a job centre, or Pôle Emploi, in the heart of Paris. A place that's unlikely to see a dip in visitor numbers any time soon, because the latest figures show that 3.3 million French people are now out of work. That's 11.1 per cent. Well, the French president, François Hollande, had promised to turn that situation around by the end of last year. But we're going to take you now, though, to a town in the west of France, where being out of work is almost unheard of. Managers, entrepreneurs and factory workers these people live in a town where nearly everyone has a job. Là, nous allons embaucher dans les semaines qui viennent une quarantaine de personnes. Alors, je vous arrive, je pensais pas retrouver un emploi, un CDI. Alors, on a embauché euh, cinq personnes. They're all residents of Les Herbiers, a town of 15,000 in France's Vendée region. Unemployment in the Vendée is nearly half the national average. This factory makes windows and doors. It recruited 85 staff members last year, boosting the workforce to 800. The man in charge has a simple explanation for its success. We have strong innovation and investment and high-performing equipment, so we can give our clients what they want. Metal doors are a bestseller. Philippe works on the assembly line. He says people from the Vendée are well known for having a good work ethic. The Vendéans are known for being good, conscientious workers. I'm good here. If I can make things progress in the company, that would be valuable for me too. Small and medium-sized businesses are often cited as a secret to the region's success. There are 200 of them within a 20-kilometer radius of the factory. At this research center, the employees and the manager interact daily. Technician Olivier believes a close working relationship drives everyone to do their best. Where I was working before, it was all about numbers, targets. We always had to do more of them. It's not the same here. People work well together. It's not good news everywhere in the Vendée. Orders are falling at this carpentry workshop, so there's not enough work to go around. But rather than making his staff redundant, the manager is giving them extra training. The idea is to prepare them for when the economy picks up. We maintain staff numbers. We just cut back hours a little. Sandrina used to clean the wooden planks. She's been trained up to cut them. It's a promotion for me within this business. Ahead of the game, the region's companies hope to benefit first from any signs of future economic recovery in France. Municipal elections will be held across France during the spring and perhaps the most closely watched race of all will be the race to win the keys to Hôtel de Ville or City Hall here in the French capital. Well, their campaign is in full swing and with women candidates leading the charge, Wednesday night's televised debate was a very closely watched event. Arriving together, the two front runners competing to become the first woman ever to run Paris. On the left, Anne Hidalgo, the current first deputy mayor. And next to her, Natalie kosciusko morize former spokesperson for Nicolas Sarkozy. They went head to head in a televised debate. The Socialist Party's Anne Hidalgo wants to invest in better public services and create more social housing. I want to invest 2.5 billion euros in public transport and road improvements. I can build about 1,500 new homes in the areas available, and I want to turn offices into housing. Facing off against her, the UMP's Natalie kosciusko morize sees herself as a champion of the middle class. I will be the mayor of no additional taxes. I will be a mayor who builds, my aim being to allow the middle classes to stay living in Paris. Current polls show Hidalgo coming out ahead. She's widely viewed as a continuation of current mayor Bertrand Delanoy, still popular after 13 years in the job. Trailing behind in the race are three other candidates, for the Greens, the National Front and the Left Party. The vote will take place at the end of March. France's political parties will be watching closely, as the campaign covers issues relevant to the whole country. 
Organizers called it a day of anger. Thousands took to the streets of the French capital last weekend to express their fury at the French president. Well, participants came from a cross-section of French society and their reasons for taking part varied greatly. But the one thing that united them all is a sense that François Hollande is taking this country in the wrong direction. They took to the streets of Paris in their droves, united in their disgruntlement with the socialist government and their calls for François Hollande to resign. But the protesters' causes and their motivations were many and varied. I'm the regional representative for an employer's organization, a movement for small business owners who are refusing to pay payroll taxes because we're overwhelmed by all the charges. I've had enough of all the laws that are being made to deny and destroy the family. We're here to say no to universal health cover. The president parades around with women that are not his, and he tells us he's just a regular president. There's nothing regular about that. Nothing that goes on in this government is normal. Kauzak, the tax minister, evades his taxes. Just look at the government website and the assets that ministers declare. They're all lies. I'm richer than half of them. Smoke screens, it's always the same, not addressing the real issues. And so the participants railing against Hollande ranged from interest groups to fanatics. Some targeted his tax policies, others the legalisation of gay marriage. Supporters of controversial comedian Giudone turned out, as did journalists, unemployment campaigners, anti-Freemasons and anti-immigration groups, along with those opposing industrial wind turbines. Indeed, it's thought up to 50 smaller groups, most to the right of the political spectrum, were drawn to the event. The underbelly of xenophobia also on show. The chanting and slogans condemned by the main opposition party. Demonstrating is of course a right. However, you break this by employing racist and anti-Semitic slogans. That's a crime. What happened yesterday was clearly wrong. As darkness fell, the protest turned violent. Police used tear gas to disperse several hundred youths who lobbed bottles and fireworks. At least 150 people were arrested and the authorities said 19 officers were injured in the clashes. And we end at a specialist comics bookstore here in the 17th arrondissement of Paris because the 41st edition of the Angoulême International Comics Festival is now in full swing. Well, it's the biggest event of its kind in Europe and it draws hundreds of thousands of people. And the prize ceremony is an opportunity for artists to be given due recognition. Comic enthusiasts have descended on Angoulême. The medieval town's winding streets burst with colour, shop windows boast cut-out characters. For 41 years, the annual Festival de la Bonne Dessinée has celebrated the Franco-Belgian tradition of comics. Increasingly, it's been looking to expand its horizons. The theme of the 41st festival is comic books about the world, so comics that are for adults. In a few decades, comic books have evolved from being for children to being for adults. Today, comic books are maturing even further. Over a thousand professionals have headed to the festival, giving comic book fans a chance to bump into their favorite cartoonists. Just now I met loads of artists. It's an opportunity to meet the cartoonists at their stands, speak with them, get their autographs, and to see their beautiful exhibitions. Loyal fans of Mafalda, created by the Argentinian artist known as Kino, can check out an exhibit celebrating 50 years since the cartoons first appeared. A sizable exhibition space has been dedicated to Jacques Tardy, who spent 35 years drawing the First World War. 2014 marks 100 years since the start of the war that claimed an estimated 10 million lives. Tardy's album, Putain de Guerre, is on show. There were ordinary people who were caught in a chain of events. They were manipulated, that their lives were thrown away, and I think it was scandalous. I find it very powerful and touching. It's emotional for me. There's an atmosphere that takes me somewhere else. It's very strong. With workshops, discussions, and even 24 hour jawathons, Angoulême is above all an occasion for comic fans and cartoonists to meet up and get creative. 
Well, that's it for this week's edition of France in Focus. I do hope you'll join us again next week.